OK, let's take a look at using the liquify tool to give more emphasis to the area of the eyes. Now first things first, let's come over to the panels, to the layers. We're going to duplicate the background layer using Command or Control J. Next we're going to go to Filter, coming down to Liquify. Clicking on that will open the Liquify dialog box. Right, let's zoom in using Command or Control and the spacebar, dragging it out over the area. There are the eyes. And the tool we're going to be using, or should I say the brush, is this one here. It's the bloat brush. Coming across, we got the brush size. We got the brush density. Now this is the, oh thank you very much, it's changed, it's tell us, it changes the brush edge strength. Keeping this quite low at 26, the brush rate here changes the brush, so the way it's applied, the application. Take it up quite high there and it really is vigorous. We're keeping this quite low there. Going to take it down to around about the 20 will be pretty good. The brush size though we need to take this up. It wants to be larger than the eye itself. So something around about the 150 would be pretty good. That's great there. Clicking on the area of the iris. You can see the little cross there. Going to just click down once and again. And just slowly taking it up in size, just moving it very slightly, just keeping an eye on the, forgive the pun, but just keeping an eye on the shape there. Just again now to the next one, just slowly bringing that up, just a little bit more there and a little bit more on the edge should look pretty good. If you go a little bit too far, don't forget you can use Control Z to undo it. You can also pick up this brush here, which is the Reconstruct brush, and you can go over taking it back to its original settings. Right, let's pick up the Bloat brush again, just clicking in a little bit at a time there. Perhaps just too much on the last one. Actually using the Pen tool, the Stylus Pressure is ticked as well. So just a little bit more there. That looks good. Right, let's quit while we're ahead. Let's just take a look at the lips and the teeth here. We're going to make the lips just a little bit bigger. We're going to pick up this finger tool here, but it's actually called the forward warp tool, reducing the size of the brush down. I want to go to about 70 pixels, I think would be pretty good. A very attractive model taken by the photographers, taken by a friend of mine, Joe Doyle of joedoyle.co.uk very natural look, just bringing the lips down a little bit there, just using this forward warp tool. We can bring the teeth up a little bit as well. In fact, if we come to this, the next brush, one of my favoritely named brushes, which is the Pucker brush, and just clicking down, we can bring that in like so. Just clicking down, keeping it away from the edge, otherwise it distorts as we've just seen there, it just sort of goes a little bit too much and just gently coming around that area there just brings it in a wee bit. Great stuff. To bring that back out, I'm going to pick up the finger tool there, the forward warp tool, just pulling that back down and just shaping that back around. Magic or what? Right, let's take a look. Let's bring the lips down a little bit more. Don't forget you've got to be a little bit careful when making the lips broader so you can actually pull them out as well up over the top. But uh, that looks pretty good like that. Let's just check it out. It's just using the spacebar, the hand tool. Click OK. Right. Through we go. Look in there. You can see the way the eyes are sparkling now. You can see the difference it's made. No, no, thank you very much. Go away. Just clicked on the thumbnail there, which is the reason why that dialog box popped up. But you can see the way we can just use it to subtly adjust that area, giving more emphasis now to the area of the eyes. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to soften the skin down. To do that, Control J or Command J to duplicate layer one. So we've now got layer one copy. In fact, we can click in here and we can put in blur because that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be coming to filter, blur. We're going to go to Gaussian blur. We're going to blur it. That looks pretty good there. If you just click and move around, you see the way that the previews tick so you can see it on the image itself. It doesn't matter if we slightly overcook this because we can begin to sort of have more control now by coming down holding down the Alt or the Option key, clicking on this icon to put in a mask. You'll notice the skin has come back. We've got the Hide All Mask. Pressing X on the keyboard, we've now got white as the foreground colour. Picking up the brush, and the reason why it doesn't matter if we overcook it is because we're going to reduce the opacity down to 60% by pressing 6 on the keyboard. 
we're going to increase the size of the brush right up. That looks pretty good. It's a soft edge brush. We're going to come round this area. So we're just brushing in the blur, as it were, and softening the skin down, just quickly coming around this. You will, of course, take a lot more time and effort than what I am doing. Just pop in right in now, reducing the size of the brush down. You can see the effect it's having as it comes around, just softens it down nicely. Just sort of smooths the skin out there, dropping it right down in size with the left hand square bracket. And it gives a lovely sort of look to the skin, a nice glow look. But we've got control. You notice the way it's coming through grey, the little white patches are where we've gone over it so more than once. In other words, we've now gone to the 100%. The going at 60% allows us to have more control. I'm just going to leave the edge of the nose clear like that. Joe used a, a very shallow depth of field to, and you can see the way it's falling off there. Great depth of field just to give emphasis onto the face, and that's what we're doing now is we're just bringing through, and you can see the way that the, the teeth and the lips there are looking pretty good. So it's had a very attractive, natural looking model. Zooming out. 100%. Let's take a look here. What we're now going to do is come into the opacity and drop the opacity down further. We just want to see some of the texture coming through in the skin. That looks pretty good. Don't forget you can press X on the keyboard so you've got black as a foreground colour. And you can now come in and come over the eyebrows, over the eyelashes and the eyes just to make sure you're not blurring these off at all. And just painting any other little bits and pieces, perhaps over the lips or whatever. Right, let's zoom out. Let's take a look. Great stuff. To give a little bit more emphasis again, what we can do is we can do something like pick up the elliptical marquee tool, drag it out over the image, coming right up over the bottom there. Going to come into the center, just going to reposition it like so. We're going to come down and we're going to pick up what we're going to pick up. We're going to pick up the hue saturation and come into the lightness slider on the hue saturation. I'm going to drop this down. You can see the way we're darkening it off. I've got it the wrong way around, but I'm not going to worry because we're going to come back to this. There's our mask there. It's the white areas, the side that's shielded, the black area we're working on. But we'll just use Command or Control I, which will invert it. Whew. Right, coming to Filter, we're going to go to Blur. We're going to go to Gaussian or Gaussian Blur. And clicking on the edge there, you'll notice the more we take this up, the more we can soften it off. Click OK to that. You can even press command or control and just move it down a little bit. You can move the whole sort of area of the mask around as well like so, so we can just reposition it, drop in the opacity down a touch or two. And there it is. There's our finished image. Let's zoom in and take a look. If we just go back to the start image there. Thank you. That's just making the eyes a little bit bigger, just reducing the, the lips and the teeth, or reducing the teeth and increasing the size of the lips is what I was struggling to say. Softening the skin tones down a little bit there before finally adding a dark vignette just to give more emphasis to those lovely eyes. And there you go. Go on, give it a try. It really does work a treat. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and until the next time, happy imaging and take care.